Hey, what's up guys? It's Theo from Fino Concept, and today we are looking at infographics and how to create your own. In today's tutorial, we are creating this infographic in Adobe Photoshop. Let's get started. Welcome to Fino Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So I'll go ahead and open up my application and go ahead and create a new document. So in this case, um, we are going to have a custom width and height. You know what? We'll go with the usual one, which is 2K by 2K. So I'll go ahead and change this to pixels and change the width to 2000 and the height by 2000 and just click on create. All right, so let's zoom in and see what we are dealing with. The first few things I'm going to do is actually grab the ellipse tool, which is right here, and create a circle, a perfect circle. So I'll hold down the shift key and click and drag, like so. If you don't hold down the shift key, you're going to get something like this. This is not what we want. So I'll hold down the shift key to get a perfect circle like this. Now, you pretty much can't see anything because uh, the ellipse is white and the background is also white. So let's fix that. If you go over to the layers panel, you notice that we have what we call the ellipse here. And I'll just double click on the thumbnail, which is right here. Then we go ahead and change the color to whatever we want. So in this case, I'll have it uh, probably a purple color is fine and click on OK. So let's place this uh, wherever we want at the moment. Let me resize using the move tool or V on your keyboard, resize to something like this. So we are basically going to create duplicates of this and have it line up vertically downwards. So I'll put this somewhere around here. Now with the move tool selected, hold down the shift and alt key like so. Then you can just click and drag like so. And in some cases you have to hold down the control key as well, especially if you have auto select active right here. So if you don't want to go through that, you can always just use control J to create a duplicate and you can also put that somewhere here. Now, the cool thing about Photoshop is um, the latest versions are now using what we always have with um, Adobe Illustrator, where anytime you move an object, you notice that we have the markers which show the exact dimension or the distance between everything so as you can see we have 103 pixels being the separate being the separation between all of these shapes and that is actually interesting so i'll highlight everything select the first one hold down the shift key and select the last one and i'll put this uh, at a reasonable place so i think somewhere around here is just fine for me now I want to create duplicates on the right hand side so we'll do the exact same thing you can use the alt key which in some cases you have to use the control key as well, or you can just use control J for the duplication. So I'll place this somewhere around here as well. Now um, I place this slightly over to the bottom because I want to have some form of text over here. So this is what I'm going to do. I notice that uh, if I want to type in something, let's grab the horizontal type tool. If I want to type in something here, uh, font too huge, let's pick 12 and make it left align. You notice that the text is way too high. So what I'll do is I'll actually increase the spaces in between these three. So uh, let's go ahead and delete this and just increase the space, increase the space as well. So yeah, we have perfect alignment. Then let's create the duplicate one more time. So control J and have this over to one side like so okay perfect now we don't we don't really need this so let's go ahead and delete it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make every ellipse we have here the color white uh, because we'll be adding in a colored stroke around it now um i changed the color to purple or magenta just because i wanted you to see that we have an ellipse or a circle in there so let's go ahead and change all of them to white now to change the color of a shape you just double click on the thumbnail and just do that now this would have been a lot easier if i had just done this to begin with but like i said i just wanted you to see that um i actually have shapes in there so i'll bring up my rulers using ctrl 
R. Then I'll just click and drag from the left hand side and place it at the center like so. We want everything to be aligned perfectly. So if I go ahead and select everything, so you select the bottom one, you hold down the shift key and select the top one and you have a perfect selection of every item. Then I'll try and place it at the center. So you notice if I zoom in here is my center and I'll just have it in there like so. Still, you can't see anything, but that's fine. We'll work with that any moment from now. So if I grab one of the ellipse, I go down here where we have the FX, just click on it and go to stroke. Now I already had a preset in here because I've already created something like this already. And uh, this is what I'm using or these are the settings I'm using. So if I go into stroke, which is right here, I have a size of 50. Yours may be different. So depending on what you are using it for, make sure you adjust it accordingly. And the position is set to inside. The blend mode is set to normal. The opacity is set to 100%. The fill type is set to color and no gradient or pattern or anything like that. Then I'll select a specific color. So um, any color you want, um, I'm going with magenta to begin with and click on OK, click on OK. Now we are going to apply the exact same effect on all of our shapes right here. So I'll right click, go to copy layer style. Select the layer right on top, hold down the shift key, select the last layer on top, right click and go to paste layer style. So this is going to apply it to every single thing. Now we are going in there to change it one after the other because we want different colors. Why not? So I'll just click or double click on the FX here. Instead of selecting the layer, go to FX, go to stroke. You can actually do it that way, but we'll use the... Um, let's say the much quicker way um, let's go with a blue color so something like this is okay so instead of doing what we just did you can just double click on fx and it will open it up like so so if i go into stroke i can select another color i want um green okay okay double click on fx stroke select another color let's go with some form of brownish yellow double click again now I'm just trying to get um, <laughs> the flat design colors I have of head. So if you don't have specific colors to use for anything, just Google search flat UI colors and you get something like this. So once I have all of these, you know what, let's go ahead and group them up to make it look much nicer. So hold down the control key and press G with one layer selected, hold down the control key and press G and that's going to create a group. Do the exact same thing for this, that, this, and that. So we have different groups um, with different layers. So if I grab the horizontal type tool, now we can start typing in some information. Um, something like this seems fine. So what I'll do is, you know what, I want to have this over at the bottom. And I actually want the text or the font size to be much smaller. So probably six six seems a little bit too small probably eight is fine and let's go ahead and make all of them eight i still have a bunch of information at the bottom <laughs> so let's go ahead and delete these i don't need them now if you have your specific test feel free to put those in there so what i'll do is i actually want the one at the top here to be all caps so go into window make sure that character is checked and it should pop up somewhere on your screen so um i'm going to keep or maintain the font size i want it bigger than the text beneath and i'm probably change the font type to the bold version i'm using montserrat fonts in case you are interested in that but you can also go with gotham or carbon or any font you feel comfortable with and i'm also going to make this all caps so you have the all caps um toggle right here i'll just click on it and we have something like this and I also have the tendency of making the top color or the heading a different color as compared to what I have here. So I'll click on color, which is right here, or you can also click here. Any of them will work just fine. And use the eyedropper tool to sample the color from here and click on OK. So this is what we have. Neat. Now there's something I personally like doing, and that is leaving some form of space between the heading and the text itself. So I'll go ahead and highlight everything I have here. Go into the 
auto setting we have here so this basically controls the spacing between the text above and the text beneath so if i go ahead and select the whole of this i can change the distance between them so 10 points here is how 48 points looks like it's right beneath you can't even see 18 points would be something like this but let's go with uh, 16 or 14 i think 14 looks okay you know what let's go with 12. <laughs> all right so this is much much better so instead of creating this all over again um i'll actually just duplicate and make changes to them as and when i see the need fit so i actually made a mistake this is actually in group five it should be in group one because um that is what we have here so this is group one so just click and drag it into the group one um group <laughs> so no one let's bring this down here a little bit and i'm actually going to select everything i have here everything i have here and move them towards the left because all the texts are also going to be um on this side if you want you can put some in here if you have enough spacing but i will have all of them on the right hand side so Control j to duplicate and i'll put this somewhere around here and that should be in group two let's create another duplicate this will be in group four so just uh, find your way around it once you are comfortable with how you want your placement to be you will know where exactly to put everything so i already have a fair idea of where everything is going to be so this will be in group five and this will be in group three so the basic thing i'm going to do right now is just make adjustment to um everything i have in here matching the colors and everything like so so let's go ahead and just do one then i'll speed ramp from there so again i'll highlight the first text or the heading change the color to match what i have here and i'll do the exact same thing for this one as well change the color to match the blue here now you can see uh, i have more than enough text here so i'll just delete uh, a few of them so that they don't intrude over here and I'll probably bring the text beneath like so. Yeah, this is much better. So we'll go ahead, change the color. Green. Go ahead, change this color. Um, like I've been hearing there are a bunch of colors. And we are not making the right use of them. There's green, there's emerald, there's so many of them. <laughs> and we don't always say purple. There's magenta, there's mauve, there's wine. It's confusing sometimes. <laughs> So uh, this is what we have and we can leave it as this and that is just fine. But what I like to do is adding in numbers. If you have um, art, you can also add it in there. Let's see how an art will look like. So if I go ahead into my downloads, I'm sure I should have. Yeah, I have something like this. Now, let me sample this out of the design. Now, unfortunately, this isn't actually part of the tutorial, so I don't want to go into too much in-depth of what I'm doing here. So if you have um, a clip art or an icon, you can just place the icon in here like so. And that should work just fine. Uh, let me hide this before it starts confusing some people. <laughs> and this, this looks nice. You can have in as many icons you have in the circle. But if you don't have that, you can just go ahead and just use numbers. I mean, why not? So I can have the number one. You can see because the text is actually white and I'll change the color to purple to match what I have here. Probably make it 30 points and place it here. I think 30 is a bit too small. So 48 seems okay. Place it here. Um, I can have, that should be in group one. I can have the number two that will be here you can see because it is at the back of the shape so it is still in group one and the ellipse is on top of it as you can see so i can have all of the other text on top like so and we can also have um oops the number three i made a mistake we can also have the number three that is going to be here also change the color to match the blue here we can have the number four, change the color to match the red, then place it there like so. And finally, the number five, 
change the color to green and we have it like so so basically this is how to create something like this i hope this tutorial helped you out a lot um let me know in the comment section below what you like us to try next and if this tutorial was helpful to you also let me know in the comment section below anyway thank you guys for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to this channel and our other channels which i have them linked below and as always don't forget to share with your family and friends this is theo from final concept and i'll talk to you guys in the next one